In this video, we're going to look at how Ridley Wirtz deals with core loss predictions for transformers and inductors. We do this in a unique way by working with LT Spice and using circuit models. Now, I'm not sure I've seen anybody else do this, um, so if any of you watch this video and you think you've seen this kind of thing before, please let us know. We'd love to go look at that. Anyway, let's get started. Click on specifications to start your design. Here is our converter. It's a 300 to 425 volt input to switch forward. And it's running with an output voltage of 12 volts and 20 amps, 100 kilohertz switching frequency. And we can see here simulation of the output current. Here it is with startup, ending up in steady state. We hit continue and we get that output current to steady state very quickly. So there it is 20 amps with ripple current around there and that's all good. Now let's go to see what's happening in the transformer. So we click on the transformer icon here. It's former designer. And this here we can see is the detailed view of the transformer designer. So we can individually look at the core choice, the winding losses, proximity losses, core losses. And later on we'll produce a video where we show you how to use Ridley IQ to design all of this automatically in just one step. But today, let's go in and look at the details of the core loss for the transformer. And we can see this indicator here showing 0.2 watts. It's quite low core loss, which is what we would expect for this converter. It's not running particularly high frequency and we're not really pushing the core too hard. But let's go look at the details of that core loss. It's a 2620 core from uh, I think Ferrox Cube and TDK make that one. And right now we're gonna use a 3C90 material. And it's indicating our core loss at 0.198 watts. And within Ridley Works, we do this in the classic way where we look at the Delta B, we assume it's a sine wave, which of course it isn't. Um, but then we read off the core loss um, per cubic centimeter multiplied by the volume of the core to calculate this core loss. And we'll expect that when we look at this in more detail with more realistic waveforms, this uh, core loss would actually climb a little bit. And what we do in Ridley Works is quite interesting. This is the part that I don't see anybody else doing, is we generate a core loss model to run in LT Spice. It's got six R's, sorry, seven R's and six L's and it's got a voltage raised to a power, which is a function of the core loss exponents from the uh, core loss tables. We're gonna check this little box here that says enable the LT spice model. These are unusual values in this core loss model, very high resistances and very high inductances. These are Henry's and megohms. So sometimes spice might struggle with that. So you have the option of turning off the core loss model if you don't want to deal with that. Uh, in, in a simulation. So we click OK. Now that model, we want to put that into LT Spice. So we click LT Spice. Creating LT Spice schematics. And now we're done with that. So you see instantaneously we have the LT Spice models, we have transient models, small signal, and a transient sweep, which we'll talk about in a subsequent video. OK. Now we go into LT Spice. We bring up our file, and here we can see the same two switch forward in LT Spice that we had inside Ridley Works, and now we can run the simulation of the converter right here. So we can look at that same inductor current if we want to, or the switch current, and you'll notice across the transformer that we have a core loss model here. Let's attach this block representing the core. Now this model is only applicable for the 3C90 material, the PQ2620 core shape, and 62 turns on the primary. And that was all with uh, five turns on the secondary. But for that fixed transformer that's be wound, you can actually put it in any circuit, any topology, and you can find out the core losses. It doesn't depend on you know, the specific waveforms of the um, two switch forward. So let's run this circuit. Looks like it's running okay. There's our primary switch current coming into steady state. 
that's probably long enough. We can also click on the core loss block, so we hold the Alt key down to invoke the temperature sensor, and click on that. And then this is our instantaneous core loss cycle by cycle. Let's zoom in on that. And let's get rid of the primary current waveform because we don't need to see that. And here we can see it's real-time simulation of that core loss. We, we don't run the circuit and then go look afterwards and look up the table. We're calculating the core losses in real time with this particular converter. So now you hit control, click on the core loss waveform name, and you see it's actually giving 300 milliwatts of loss here, whereas the conventional way of looking at core loss would call that out as just 200. And of course this is within the circuit we're looking at the non-sinusoidal waveforms and the fact that it's not anything close to a 50% duty cycle. It's more like a 35% duty cycle here. And that is invoking extra loss inside the core. So that's interesting. We can try some other things here now. We can raise that voltage to the maximum. Let's make that 420 volts maximum. And we'll run simulation one more time. Now you see it going through a little transient at the beginning. Okay, we'll make sure we're zooming into a range where it's in steady state. And now you can see that our core loss have climbed to 440 milliwatts from 300. So the interesting fact of this model is that it's showing the core loss is going up as we drive the core with shorter duty cycles. And we don't have to do any calculations to do that. LT Spice does all this automatically. So now we're getting into, you know, what is the worst case core loss we're going to see. So we can do high line, low line. Uh, we can do uh, different load conditions and find out the core losses for all these different operating points. Another thing that might be interesting is, well, what if we took the frequency up a little bit? Suppose you have a frequency range from your control chip that lets it move around a little bit. So let's suppose that 100 kilohertz became 125 kilohertz. So if you're watching this, what do you think is going to happen to the core losses on this transformer if I run at a higher frequency? So let's run that. And we'll stop right there, zoom in again, and now we look at the alt, sorry, control. Now we've seen the 440 milliwatts actually drops down to 350. So this is counterintuitive for some people. They think, well, if you raise the frequency on a transformer, it's going to get hotter because the core losses go up. But the thing you have to remember is if you raise the frequency with the same number of turns and the same designs, the delta B is going to go down. So that's a more dominant effect. So as the frequency goes up here, we see this transformer core loss goes down. So I hope you enjoyed watching that. If you have any questions, please send them to info at RidleyEngineering.com. And remember these core loss models are all inside RidleyWorks. If you don't see our core materials in there, it's very, very easy to add your own core materials. You just have to go extract some data for that core material. You only have to do it one time, and then we'll be able to build core loss models every time you use, use that material from that point on. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back soon with some more videos.